Hello there and happy Thursday to you. This is Carla at Bound to Be Vintage and I'm back today with another Thrifty Thursday haul. Today I'm using the hashtags Thrifty Thursday which is an open collaboration hosted by Sherry at Turquoise Dreaming and also the hashtag Thrifted Treasures which is another collaboration by Dale at Not Too Shabby Chic. I'll have their channel information linked down below so you can go check out what they're thrifting and uh, all the other people in the collaboration as well. So today I have quite a bit for you. This haul was done over a long period of time, uh, months. These are just items that haven't made it into my other videos. So let's start with the Martha Stewart that I found. Um, this is a package of cupcake and cake stencils. Um, was a dollar forty nine, eight stencils in here. I'm not going to be using it for cupcakes. Um, I thought this would work for tea dyeing paper, the larger ones, and the smaller ones might be really good for stenciling. And I'll show you what was in the the, the package. Start with the bigger one. It's a glowy. And again, I would use these bigger ones when I was tea dyeing paper to get the design on the paper. There's another large one. And then for these smaller ones, I would either stencil with Distress Inks or um, maybe with molding paste. This is the one I was most excited about. I think this flower would be really pretty um, on a page with stenciling or modeling paste, I guess you call it. And there's that one. And the butterfly, and then another doily design. The other Martha Stewart that I found were these punches. I can't resist a punch for $1.59. That's such a great price for Martha Stewart. So there's this edge punch, and then this other punch for inserting ribbon on a page. And I do like to do that from time to time on my journal pages. I have a larger one, but I thought this smaller one would be a nice addition at, at that price. A few videos ago, I hauled some paper that was in a roll, and uh, it was just in plastic wrap, and I wasn't sure what it was. And when I got it home, and I opened it, it had a scent, and I realized it was uh, probably drawer liner, scented drawer liner. But I didn't see why it couldn't be used for journals. So I came across this box of some scented drawer liner and I just thought it was beautiful. Um, if I take the paper out of this box and put it in my paper roll basket that I have, I could use the box for storage. It's quite long um, for washi tape, long ribbons or pieces of lace. Um, this is House of World of Windsor perfume drawer liner and it's Lily of the Valley. And the print is quite dark, but I, I like it. I think it would be good for um, a journaling, gardening journal, maybe a Victorian journal. It's really quite pretty with the lilies of the valley, dark background, the bright little butterflies. So I believe there's 12 sheets in here, and that was $3. I thought that was worth it, uh, especially since it had the box. I got this calligraphy set. I do like to do lettering in my journal sometimes. Now this was completely closed. I've opened it. Um, you can see it was $13.46 at Walmart, but it was $1.49 at the Goodwill. It was uh, completely unused, but you can see that the inks, the little ink cartridges have dried up. But when I saw the shape of them, if I can get this out, I realized that I had some of these at home in a sepia color that I've used for another project, but, but I had problems with the pen. So I got them home and put it together and the ink cartridges worked great. And it comes with three different nibs for the different kinds of um, lettering that you wanna do. Let's see if I can, there we go, get that apart. So I've just used this this nib so far. I like writing, writing with these uh, fountain style pens. And it did have a little instruction booklet, and I've even used instruction booklets from other calligraphy sets 
and journals because these lettering pages are so interesting if you like typography and lettering. So that was a nice little deal. And then just yesterday I found these interesting wood items. They both say daisy chain. I'm not a knitter or a crocheter, so I'm not real familiar with that brand. But these are little Russian doll wooden yarn bobbins. Thought that would be fun to wind some lace or yarn or ribbon around. And I don't know if I maybe would try to age them up a little bit with some tea or coffee dye or a little distress ink or something. I have to think about that. But those were $1.49 at St. Vincent de Paul. And there were also these simply knitting, I guess they're mitten forms. I just really like this design on here that looks like wood burning and this cute little package, uh, pack, little envelope tied on with string that says, don't forget the thumbs. And it feels like there are wood thumbs in there. Let's see if I can get this off and I have to untie it. I see there are holes over here. I guess that would be maybe where the thumbs go. If anybody knows anything about these, if you let me know in the comments, I'd appreciate it. I don't. I don't know about knitting, but I thought if they didn't, if I couldn't use them somehow in a journal, that I might just use them for decoration in the studio uh, here, craft room. They might just be nice to hang on a wall with maybe some fibers dangling. Well, I'm not having much luck getting this open. I'd like to see if these thumbs somehow attach or how that works. I don't want to destroy this envelope because the envelope itself was kind of cute. Don't forget the thumbs. No, I don't know. I'm not sure. There's nothing. Okay, well, that's that with the thumbs. I thought that was real cute. I also found these stickers that look like those old brass plate stencils. Um, they were $1.49 and supposedly they were $1.99 at Hobby Lobby. So not a huge savings, but I just don't shop in craft stores much. So when I ran across these, I thought they would be nice in clusters and with something back behind the tag. It could look really nice. And I found some stamps that are kind of more scrapbooking stamps, uh, but I was thinking on the back of a journaling card or a tag, it might be nice to even stamp part of one of these, like kind of going out the edge, just for some interest. And then there are some that are just plainer that could be filled out on the back of a tag or a journaling card. And then there are others that are more specific, like photo record. But I thought that would be interesting to just add some uh, extra to the back of a tag. Okay, and let's look at some of the, the uh, textile and lacy stuff now. Bring that over here. I found this sweet little doily that's appliqued and embroidered of strawberries. And I'm going to do a fruit journal at some point. So I thought this would um, be good for some sort of pocket or belly band or something like that. But it's just really nice little design and that was a dollar. So I picked that up for fruit journals. Also for a fruit journal, I found this ribbon. It's older style, it's kind of like a cloth ribbon, um, but it was a quarter, they were having a a sale that day at the thrift store and I just thought the berry design was still very colorful and would look nice in a fruit journal. I found this little crochet piece that's like a like a purse and on the right journal I would put this on the front with maybe some other laces and fabric collage and then something could be tucked down inside the little pocket. 
maybe a little mini journal, a round circular journal or something like that. So again, for a dollar, I got this with no specific project in mind, but I just really liked it. Found a package of crochet flowers. Again, I would like these on the cover of the journal most likely if I was doing a fabric and lace collage. They're quite detailed, quite layered. They're all the same. And they could be tea dyed or coffee dyed for a darker look. I found this uh, lace collar and I think that these appliques are fun to add to a page. Get rid of some of the glare. This was 99 cents. A nice piece like that. And again, coffee dyeing or tea dyeing could give it a more aged look. That was the effect, and there was this little bonus piece in the back here of another little lace corner applique. I picked up these square doilies because I saw someone um, fold it into an envelope. I think that theirs were probably a little smaller, but I took one and I was just having a play to see if I could turn it into an envelope. And I think if I put it on a page sideways like this, it would work. You can see I, I did various fold lines trying to figure out what depth I could make it. And I did fold these over and I cut off the little, this little part here so that didn't stick out. And I think it would make a pretty pocket on a page. So I believe I'll be able to use this size. Smaller probably would have been ideal, but this is what I found. So I think I can use that for a pocket. And those were $1.49 for the lace doilies. And then I found these lace lighthouse, um, I guess appliques you'd call them. Um, I kind of remember things like this from like the late 80s or 90s maybe where they were sewn on country blue pillows with a ruffle or sewn in a big embroidery hoop with a ruffle. Um, I'm working on a nautical altered book and I may be able to use these. Unfortunately, I think I will have to lose the base of the lighthouse um, because of the length. But maybe if I make one of those tall skinny journals, I can use one in its entirety. But I think this one here, uh, and again, um, I probably will dye it to get a more aged look, maybe rough it up a little bit. Um, now these were $2.49, but the gal who checked me out um, I had the lace doilies in this and she didn't understand why this would cost more than the lace doilies. So she charged me the, the dollar, um, 49, even though these are cloth and the, the doilies, lacy doilies are paper, but I, I wasn't going to argue with her. I picked up a bag of fabrics. These were a dollar 49. I was particularly interested in the plaids because another journal that I'd like to do probably in the fall is a schoolhouse journal. And you've seen me haul some books and things for that before. Um, this is a whole sample pack, I guess. Got the blue, the maroon, the green, different blue, pink, beige, red, and blue. And they are doubled over, so there is a good, let's see if I can get one of these, good amount of fabric there. Because they are, they are folded over. So there's a nice piece of fabric. Um, I don't know why, I just think of plaid when I think of school journals. Um, we didn't wear plaid school uniforms or anything like that, but I just remember as a girl, I had a lot of plaid dresses. So I think plaid when I think of school journals. So I got these for that. Um, there's some extra green plaid here. There's some fishing fabric, which I probably will not use. I will redonate that or pass that on. 
And this fabric really caught my eye too because it's such a vintage looking print. And I, I like to do a lot of vintage and primitive style journals. And this says, um, the Pat L. Nichols collection circa 1840 for P&B textiles, 100% cotton. So this would be a reproduction, I guess, of an 1840s fabric. Pretty. Then I wanted to show you a few things that I've actually used in projects. I bought this bag of tassels, and I don't really need tassels. I have quite a few actually, and especially the just these little silky ones. Um, there are a number of those. There are some that are on each end of a cord, so that might be interesting to try to make a, a bookmark or something that could kind of dangle um, out of a journal with tassels, maybe adding some beads or something. Some of them are prettier, more decorative, like upholstery style tassels. But what really got me to buy this pack was these beaded tassels here and the reason being is I immediately thought I needed to make a pin dangle for my glue bottle because I was always losing my pin on my craft table and this just seemed like the easy lazy woman's solution to make an easy dangle instead of doing a lot of beading and, and jewelry work so what I did is I took the pin with the little ball head and you have to make sure, if you haven't made one of these, you need to make sure that it's a stainless steel pin or it will rust. And then someone on the internet said they took an earring back. So I don't know if you can see, but that's just a little earring back up here. And I just took the cord and um, pushed it under one of the little ends and kind of wrapped it around and tied it in a bow. And I had an immediate dangle for my glue bottle pin. And it's worked really well for me. Um, I don't lose my pin anymore. And I've got two more. So if I get more glue, I can make more. So that was one project that I did. Then I picked up this book on shoes. I liked it because there are some very vintage shoes in here as well as more modern ones. But it's not super glossy paper. It's got a little bit of sheen to it, more than I'd like, but not as bad as some. But there are a lot of shoes in here that I thought would be perfect for fussy cutting to add to a collage. So I got this, and I also had picked up this pack of, it's called Wedding Neutrals. I think this is Michael's, it's Recollections. That was a dollar and it, had, it hadn't been opened. It was still taped shut. And it was just all these very neutral colors of pinks and peaches and blushes and that. And one of the pictures of the shoes in here inspired me to put these two together and make this journaling card. This picture had both the shoes and I'm assuming the box or the maker, a sign of the maker. And it reminded me of some of the designers like Sam Poole who are designing digitals and they're taking photographs of vintage items uh, that they have and then incorporating that into their digitals. So it reminded me of some of those vintage item photos. So I decided to try to make a journaling card out of it. So I cut the page down and I used my gold ink pen to edge it in gold. I took a sheet of this paper and ran it through the embosser, um, ran it through my die cutting machine with an embossing plate. So I had that. I took some really old Martha Stewart gift wrap that I had, and I thought the colors went well, and made a tiny little envelope. And I need to find something to go in the envelope. I haven't done that yet. I'd like to find a little vintage ticket or something that would fit. And I put a little scrap of lace and a tiny, tiny mother of pearl button, and then a bow up in the corner, and I backed it 
with some tea dyed paper that I used a lace tablecloth to get the lace design when I tea dyed it. Or actually, I think this is coffee dyed. Usually I do coffee dye with the stencils because it's a little deeper colored. So there is a journaling card that I made from these two items that I recently picked up for just a couple of dollars. And then I saw this pattern at Goodwill and I just immediately thought of a book I had thrifted quite a while ago and put on the shelf that I wanted to make into a journal. And I really thought that these little girls with their sweet little faces really lived in the world of this book. And the book is called White Gloves and Party Manners. And it has a lot of illustrations with this really sweet little girl in her smart dress and her white gloves. And it just reminded me of kind of when I was growing up. I remember wearing white gloves one Easter. And it is from, let's see where this book is from. 1966. And it's all about party manners and etiquette. And there's some wonderful little illustrations in here. So I wanted to make this into a journal, including some of the illustrations. It's quite small, so I'll probably have to take it apart and make a larger spine. Um, but I thought that these little girls looked like they would be perfect. And I thought like sleepover as well as parties. And there's another package on the other side of little girls that would work well too in this journal. And that was only um, $1.49 for both patterns. So this is a project I'm thrifting for. I'll show you a couple other things I found for it. This hanky was at the Goodwill, and I just thought that this, uh, the colors would be perfect for this with the pinks and yellows. And again, I remember having a lot of hankies, my grandmother's giving me hankies when I was a girl. And then I also found this hair tie at the Dollar Tree that's a pink tool with little daisies embroidered on it. I thought this would be nice to embellish pages or tag toppers, and it just kind of fit with this sweet kind of pink, blue, yellow um, theme for this young girl journal. And the last thing I have for you today is if you remember a few thrift hauls back if you've um, been to my channel before I found a pack of cards actually it was a whole bridge set with four pack of cards when I went to the Goodwill bins and I picked those up not really knowing what I was going to do with them I don't frequently craft with playing cards but after watching some videos I got inspired to make a paper doll and this is how she turned out you can see the playing card was the base and the wings are from some Dollar Tree butterfly die cuts. Um, I have a video um, with some of the basics on how I created her, and I will link that below. So if you're interested and you missed that video, you can take a look at that. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the haul and that you'll come back again. Hit the like button if you would. It'll help my channel to grow and be seen by others. And I'd love it if you'd subscribe and uh, hit the bell so you know when I put out another video. Thanks and have a great day.